Hi again, this is the second video for the combustion chamber topic. As we have gone through in the previous video on combustion chamber, we have looked at the section on overview. For now, we are going to look into combustion process. Well, in the combustion process, the air from the engine compressor enters the combustion chamber at a velocity up to 500 feet per second. But at this velocity, the air speed is far too high. Okay, imagine you want to light a candle, but the air is much higher or the air is too high for the candle to be light up. Similarly with the combustion where an appropriate velocity of air is needed in order for the combustion process to occur. So the first thing that the chamber must do is to diffuse it. You want to slow down the velocity. In other words, it's, you want to decelerate it and raise its static pressure. So since the speed of burning kerosene at normal mixture ratios is only a few feet per second, okay, only a few feet per second, any fuel lit even at the diffuse speed, basically at 80 feet per second, will be blown away. So a region of low velocity has therefore to be created in the chamber. And how can we do that? So the flame will remain alive. In normal operation, okay, normal operation, the overall air fuel ratio of a combustion chamber can vary between 45 to 1, so 45 amount of air and 1 amount of fuel, as well as it can go up to 130 to 1, 130 of air to 1 portion of fuel. However, kerosene will only burn efficiently at or close to ratio of 15 to 1. So you want to basically to have a very low ratio of air as well as to fuel so that the fuel must be burned with only part of the air entering the chamber. What we mean is that the primary combustion chamber. This is achieved by means of flame tube or what we call it as combustion liner that has various devices for metering the airflow distribution along the chamber. So there are flame tube available in the combustion chamber that can control the airflow distribution along the chamber. How does that look like basically approximately only 20% of the air mass flow is taken in by the snout or entry section as shown here in figure 4.2 that this kind of air okay only 20% will come in and 12% will enter the primary zone while 8% will be uh, channeling to the uh, other section okay it will come later okay 12% come first and then the 8% will go later where at the beginning okay 20% go into the, the core 80% will be bypass eh? immediately downstream of the snout are swirl veins and a perforated flare through which air passes into the primary combustion zone so you can see here right in the primary zone only 12 plus 20 okay 12 plus 20 is 32% of air and then further down we have 40% of cooling 20% dilution and it continues so the swirling air induces a flow upstream of the center of the flame tube and promotes the desired recirculation the air not picked up by the snout flows into the annular space between 
the flame tube and the air casing. So the, this 80% of air will be bypassed and come later in the combustion chamber. So through the wall of the flame tube, body adjacent to the combustion chamber are a selected number of secondary holes. So as highlighted in the previous picture, so uh, through which further 20% of the main airflow of air passes into the primary zone and the air from the swirl veins and that from the secondary air flows interact. Okay, this is where it is being mixed and creates a region of low velocity recirculation that is suitable for combustion process. So these take the form of a toroidal vortex. So you can see there's a circulation here and circulation there. Eh? Toroidal vortex, similar to a smoke ring, which has the effect of stabilizing and anchoring the flame. You want to make sure the flame are still alive. They are not being distinguished, okay? As being shown in this particular figure. So the recirculating gases hasten the burning of freshly injected fuel droplets by rapidly bringing them to ignition temperature. So it is arranged that the conical tube spray from the nozzle intersects the recirculation vortex at its center. This action, together with the general turbulence in the primary zone greatly assist in breaking up the fuel and mixing it with the incoming air. Okay, this is kind of like a, a schematic direct comparison between the two where the primary zone, what are the temperature range, the secondary zone and then where more dilution air coming in, the temperature will drop. Okay, the temperature of the gases released by the combustion is about 1800 degree to 2000 degrees Celsius, which is far too hot for entry to the nozzle guide vein of the turbine. That's why, that's where uh, dilution air are needed to cool down the temperature before it goes to the turbine section. The air not used for combustion, which amounts to 60%, so more than 60% are not being used of the total air flow, is therefore introduced progressively into the flame tube. Approximately by a third of this is used to lower the gas temperature in the dilution zone before it enters the turbine and the remainder is used for cooling the walls of the flame tube. So there are functions related to the air that being supplied to the combustion chamber, not all being used for combustion process, some of it being used as cooling purposes. So these are cooling uh, technique, okay? and that is called as film cooling okay this is achieved by a film cooling of air flowing along the inside surface of the flame tube wall insulating it from the hot combustion process so you have corrugated strip cooling you have machine cooling ring you have splash cooling strip transpiration cooling so you can read more on the process of cooling in combustion chamber that's all for now. We will continue on the fuel supply in the next video. Bye-bye.